Normally when I cook these campfire brownies, they're wrapped up in foil and put on really, really hot coals, so they only take about 10 minutes. I haven't tested this in a conventional home oven before. This is kind of a first. They're gonna bake in time? Yep. They're only small portions. I know that my whole dish revolves around the brownie and if it's not cooked correctly, I could be going home. So much to cook for. A place in the semi-final. Up and out of goal. Great job, guys. Today I'm cooking crayfish in a Thai style broth. I've got the broth on the stove reducing. The next thing I'm gonna move on to is cooking my ikan bilis, which is basically small baby anchovies. We usually have these as snacks before dinner with a nice cold beer, so I think it'll be a lovely addition. The next thing I'm gonna move on to is cooking my crayfish. It's important that I cook this crayfish properly. There's a lot of pressure riding on this. It has to be spot on, and it has to be perfect. This is make or break for me. I really, really have to fight to be at the top, and I'm gonna give it my all. Come on, Dawn. To go with my exo pork belly, I'm going to serve some crispy rice cakes. I mix together some rice flour, some tapioca flour, and also some water in a saucepan, and I just whisk that over a medium heat until it forms a sticky dough. Once the dough has formed, I take it out of the saucepan and I put it into a lined baking tray, and I just flatten it out with my hands so that I can cut it out later. I pop it into a steamer and steam it for 15 minutes. I'm going to serve some rice cakes because they're nice and chewy and they're quite plain in flavour, so they'll help to balance out the spice in the sauce. I'm looking at the clock and I'm starting to be a little bit concerned about the time that I have left and the amount of jobs I need to get done. My onglaze is still cooling. I definitely need a plan B because I don't think I can churn my ice cream in time and it's really making me stress out a bit. I just need to work faster. This is like the best travel show ever. We're going from Broome to Malaysia to the hottest part of China. We've only got 20 minutes to get there. Come on, guys! Come on, guys! You're almost there. Come on! The girls are just absolutely murdering it at the moment. They're working at a furious pace, like it's unreal. They've already gotten so much done. All their ideas sound amazing. I'm so glad I'm not down there today. It's going to be really tough, and I'm sure they're really feeling the pressure at the moment. Now that my brownie is finally in the oven, I really need to finish off that ice cream. I'm so nervous at this point because with less than 20 minutes to go, I definitely don't have enough time now to churn this ice cream in the conventional way, so I'm hoping that if I can freeze my ice cream quickly using liquid nitrogen, that I can free up time to finish the rest of this job so I can get a dish up. It freezes it so quickly that the ice crystals can't develop, so it makes sure that it's really smooth and creamy. I check on my brownies in the oven and they don't look set at all yet. Seriously, there's never been cook with such high stakes. This is for a place in the semi-final of MasterChef, and if I can't get those oranges with the brownies out of the oven, then I'm going home. No brownies, no dish. If I win MasterChef 2017, it would change my life completely. I would be able to pursue my dream of opening my own restaurant and just go out there and show the world what I want to do. 30 seconds, come on! I've gone home once before and coming back, it's made me absolutely more determined to stay. And I think me more than anyone else realizes how much this competition means to you once you've left. Get it on the plate! Come on, girls, keep going! I've sacrificed a lot to be here and I've worked so hard. To make it to the top three is a massive achievement and I'm going to fight in order to stay in this competition. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five.
So pork belly with rice cakes. So core ingredient? Chili. Yeah. Um, so I included it in the EXO and also on the pork. The cuisine? Chinese. <laughs> no surprise. And the concept? I took inspiration from sort of getting lost along little alleyways in China where you sort of find the little hole in the wall places to eat and you sort of just tuck into something that's really gnarly but delicious. <laughs> Are we lost in back alleys in China? <laughs> what part of China? I'm um, in Shanghai. My dad works there quite a bit so I've had the opportunity to go with him a few times and I have just loved every part of it every time I've been there and my favourite thing is we just don't have any plans for the day so when he's not working we just head out. We just get lost in the back streets, talk to locals, figure out where we should go, and we always find more than 10 places to eat that are amazing. And you don't, sometimes you don't quite know what it is, but you just have to give it a chance. <laughs> it's always delicious. Yeah, no, I want to taste. Great See you, Carly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. How good does that look, guys? Oh. Hey. I, I love it. I, I love it. And I love the fact she picked chili. You know, the, the you'd expect people to pick something pretty straightforward, but chili is such a, a, a great ingredient. Um, I and know that it looks it looks delicious. Amazing. I love this kind of dark red oily exo. Happiness upon happiness upon happiness. It's delicious, and I would sweat every day of the week for that. You know what I love most about it? I mean, they're all flavours that we've come across before, but just beautifully done. I mean, the pork is just sensational. It's crispy, but it melts in your mouth. It's got so much flavour. And that EXO, love the texture of the dry shrimp. And it's slightly chewy, it's hot, it's salty. It's very, very well balanced. But most of all, I love the, the rice cake. It, it, it allows you to eat that really hot, kind of sticky, salty exo and the pork and, you know, balance it beautifully. People tend to, to write off street food, but in doing so, they, they also write off the amount of technique that, that, that is needed there. You know, I think, for me, you can keep your fluid gels, your foams and your dust. If you can <laughs> cook pork like that, if you can make an exo like that in that time, I mean, it's a... It's a delicious dish of food. For me, the real mark of an XO, when it's perfectly balanced, I love the fact that she rebalanced the XO so it wasn't, wasn't too, too spicy, is when you can actually just eat it. Like yeah, that. so we've just had two incredible dishes that would, are worthy to go straight into the semi-final. Yeah. The next dish by Tamara needs to be incredible. But you know what? Chocolate, orange, oh. and a really good ice cream. Nice combo. It's going to be a tough call. Let's get her dish in. There's a lot on the line for this cook today. I'm nervous about going home. I just hope that brownie is cooked. A menu title of what this, how this dish would appear. Campfire brownie. <laughs> oh, 
fancy. Mm -hmm. Bit of theatre. <laughs> I'm like in a posh restaurant. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Good taste. Concern that the brownie wasn't cooked, so that's going to be the thing. Well, you know, I think that's the, and that, that's the concern. Ooh. I mean, everything about it is right. The concept is great. The connection is great. The chocolate is great. The chilli hit is fantastic. All those Chinese flavours work wonderfully. That, that salty orange caramel is delicious. That sauce and that ice cream is sensational. The ice cream, the texture of the ice cream is perfect, isn't it? And, it, and it, there's a mixture of kind of spice and then chilli that is just absolutely intoxicating. If you put a litre tub of that ice cream, in front of me in sauce, I don't think I could stop. Flavour of this brownie mix is wonderful, but I like my brownies fudgy, but they can't be sludgy. And that's what it is. You, you can't have a brownie that you turn upside down and it splashes out. It's a shame, cos flavour is delicious, but the fudge mixture as well. It's simple, really. The, the heat doesn't conduct in a normal oven through that skin. It would in a ramekin it had cooked. I think she just underestimated how long it would take to, to push the heat into the middle of the brownie. There's one big flip. What an absolutely wonderful tasting. It didn't feel like an elimination at all. It felt more like a celebration. Three great cooks and three great dishes. And what we were most impressed about was that you cook food that you really love, and we really loved it too. Diana, your crayfish, perfectly cooked. And your broth was full of complex and delicious flavours. Concept took us straight to your mum and dad's table. Thank you. Carly, you spoke about gnarly flavours in the back streets of Shanghai. And that's what you gave us. It's one of the best exo sauces that we've ever tasted in this competition. Tamara, we were there with you, sitting around a campfire, <laughs> camping. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful Kimberleys where the stars are just popping out, you can see them. The spice, the ice cream was delicious. That orange, sort of salty caramel, the chilli hit was delicious and yummy. The flavour of that brownie mix, and I'll tell you, it was so yum. But you know it. Yeah. It just wasn't cooked. Yeah. Tamara, I'm sorry. That's why you're going home. Yep. Yeah.